um, as someone who's just been in the assembly for a little over a year, about a year and four months now, it's a very interesting um, road, path, career. Um, people, some people think I'm, I'm a little nuts for doing it, but um, <laughs> it's my passion. I, I have been in politics most of my life, either working for politicians or organizations that care about uh, the future of, of our of our life, the sustainability of our communities, but also the betterment of everyone, right? So i um, very honored to have been elected and serving in the assembly. Uh, my priorities are the environment. I come from the environment. Uh, the Environmental Defense Fund was a former employer, as was the California League of Conservation Voters. And when I ran, I really wanted to make sure that California stayed um, as a leader in environmental issues, and in particular, I remember the year that I was running in, in August of 2010. Um, August 31st, as a matter of fact, was the last day of session. And in Sacramento, uh, they had killed the plastic bag ban. They had killed uh, a ban on bisphenol A, which is a toxic substance in baby bottles and sippy cups. And they'd killed the renewable portfolio standard, which we're trying to get to greener um, alternatives um, as soon as we can, but certainly by 2020. All those things had, had been killed mainly by the chemical industry. And um, that was offensive to me, a state like California, that we still can't get these things passed, even though we know how bad plastics are uh, in our lives and how dangerous they are. So um, I said, I'm going to do that bisphenol A bill. I'm going to ban uh, a toxic substance from baby bottles and sippy cups. And I was honored and delighted to actually have been able to do that. And um, it had been talked about in Sacramento for a number of years. Um, one of my most joyous days to date was walking off the Senate floor. Um, Senator Fran Pavley, who's very well respected in the environmental community and adored, um, had tried it a couple years. And um, she had given it to me because she said, um, it's going to have a hard time in the Senate. So go ahead and take it through the assembly because we need to have the conversation. We need to keep the conversation going. It's very, very, very important. And so many of us never thought it would get through the Senate. Um, so getting it off the Senate floor was a very exciting day. I happened to be in uh, session that day as well. So I went back to the assembly floor having, having done that. And the power of California is that uh, even though there were 10 states that had banned bisphenol A prior to California doing it, uh, the FDA hadn't really taken it all that seriously, that is the banning. And so the governor signed my bill on October 4th, and October 7th, the FDA said, you know, we probably shouldn't have BPA in baby bottles and sippy cups. And if any of you are following what's happening recently with that, because BPA is in our, in our canned goods, right? And if you followed the fact that the FDA just said, okay, um, we have to be good consumers and good advocates for ourselves, because if we don't, other things happen. Do you want to talk about the tobacco companies and how many decades it took for them to come clean on what they knew and what they knew they were doing to us, right? Um, the same is true throughout California now on a number of issues, including um, you've probably all heard about fracking and what we're doing, um, trying to find that almighty oil, right? And uh, also very dangerous because we have no regulations here in California. There are other states who have gone through just real, real, real problems with fracking. It's kind of taken over. There have been no regulations, and so it's become this massive problem where you're, where you're releasing um, very dangerous chemicals into our water supply. And we only know that they've been released once they start killing livestock and, anim and, um, and um, crops and whatnot where the, where the methane is coming up and killing these items. So we in California need to, need to really get a hold of that before it just takes over like it did in Pennsylvania and a little bit in New York. New York stopped it and said, until we have um, real clear regulations, we're not going to allow it. So I view myself as an advocate for consumers. Um, I'm doing a number of bills this year. I did a few last year, um, making sure your homeowner dues um, are not being uh, out outrageously high. You're not being gouged by them. Um, I, I view my bisphenol A, banning bisphenol A from baby bottles, sippy cups, also as a consumer item, of course. Um, huge advocate for our veterans. I did do a bill last year um, trying to get a veterans court set. Uh, the governor vetoed it. It was heartbreaking. He vetoed it in August. And in um, October, though, the Vietnam Veterans of America named me their legislator of the year. I see Dr. Brandt sitting here. Oh, my goodness. Um, there's, there are just all kinds of friends in the room. Um, uh, so, so uh, sorry. Um, uh, Dr. Brandt is, is uh, on the El Segundo 
city council, and he's also the founder of a um, of a phenomenal charter school just outside my district, but that impacts my district, which I'll talk about briefly now that he's sitting here, so I can, um, <coughs> you know, give him all kinds of the credit he deserves. At any rate. Um, and moving forward with regard to com consumer items, I mean, I, I believe that there needs to be people in Sacramento who are talking for all of you, who don't have very expensive lobbyists lobbying for you. Um, when the when plastic bags and BPA were killed, um, those successive years, it was a six million and seven million dollar campaign that the oil companies and the chemical companies launched to be able to do that. So, we as thirty eight million people here in California need to be able to talk um, to our legislators, to our to our um, other agencies that are involved and say it's just not right, it's not acceptable, we're going to demand um, some protection. So honored to do that in, in, um, in my capacity. We all know that if we have healthier lives, it's going to save us a lot of money down the road. Um, BPA, they say, causes uh, obesity, early development. Um, it definitively, because it is an estrogen, um, that, lot, that att attaches itself to cells, um, particularly newborns and younger ones who are growing at a very fast rate, and they cannot expel the, uh, the toxin from their systems. Adults can do it a little bit better, but so it stays in their system, so then it will ultimately add to prostate and breast cancer, because um, it is a hormone. So we know that it's a very dangerous product, and we have to make sure that we stop that because down the line we're going to have more prostate cancer and breast cancer and a lot of other things that are just going to cost us a lot of money. So we need to be very, very vigilant now um, and be as, as health and safety and, and safe as possible. Um, also honored to be doing a lot of elder care um, items. We know there's a health care crisis in this country, but there's an elder care crisis right behind it that is just off the charts with regard to the need and, and the diversification of the need. Um, my father uh, passed away last year after having had Alzheimer's for 17 years. So I know the system. I know how much it costs to uh, go through the process, the stages, um, and they say that one in eight people will get Alzheimer's, right? Uh, there are 10,000 people a, a day turning 65 in this country right now, and one in eight people live in California. So the math is huge, and that's just Alzheimer's. That's not all the other um, diseases or ailments that, that uh, perhaps will uh, be one of our concerns since we're all living much longer, right? So we're all living longer. We're going to have these issues, but we also have an aging population. Um, the baby boomers, which I happen to be the tail end of it, um, so by the time it gets to me, there there will be no Social Security or whatever. But but in the meantime, we have a lot of people who are aging, and uh, as a state, we have to prepare for that. It's it's going to be um, a very 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 big economic concern. Uh, I think affordable health care. I hope this the Supreme Court does the right thing and allows it to go through, but. Even if they don't, California is on that road. We will do affordable health care here in California. We will do whatever we need to make sure that there is access to good, competitive health care. It is um, it, it's just a lifesaver, obviously, but it's also the economically correct thing to do. So um, working on all those items, uh, would love to take questions, would love to hear any thoughts anyone has about um, I don't know the governor or um, any any items whatsoever. I would I would love to, uh, to to have that kind of discussion. And really quickly, I I am the chair of the the aerospace committee, um, which you know we're blessed here in California to have so much creativity and ingenuity, and really really the state that does everything right. We're the leaders and people follow. Um, so the aerospace industry in my in my present district, from Venice and the Marina South to Torrance, um, has just about every aerospace company in it in some way, shape, or form. Some are headquartered there still, or have very large um, um, uh, organizations still working within the district. But in that, we have to figure out how it is we're preparing our kids to be able to work in the 21st century and carry on not only the aerospace but all the other green technology items. There are reasons why Facebook is, is, is here, has settled here, and Google, and a lot of other companies. So we got Silicon Valley, but we have Silicon Beach. You probably all know that Google is thankfully taking over a part, portion of Venice. It's, it's really exciting to be there. But there are also a lot of small producers and production companies that are all lined up right there in Venice. But they're also in El Segundo, and they're in Torrance, and they're in Santa Monica. They're everywhere, right? And this is the beauty of California. This is what we do. We're creative. Um, we're, we're always thinking outside the box. But in this state, 
not only do we have the engineering and, and the technology and the math, now we're going to have the arts, right? So what is known as STEM education, which stands for science, technology, engineering, and math, is going to go to STEAM because they're going to add arts to it, which is brilliant for, for really touching the lives of kids. We have to get music and art back into the curriculum of our, of our children, and we certainly have to put physical education back in. But we've got to have a very well-rounded education um, for our kids, or they're not going to be prepared for the 21st century. So it's incumbent upon all of us to figure out how we can get kids interested in whatever it is they want to do, because not everyone's going to go to college. Not everyone wants to go to college, but there are so many other opportunities here in California, and they're growing every day, that we have to make sure we're preparing our teachers to teach, right, giving them the tools to teach, not to get their students to pass tests. That should not be the number one priority for our teachers to get them to pass tests. It should be for them to learn and figure out what they would like to do for the rest of their lives, right? So um, a, a charter school that's, as I said, just outside of my district is called Da Vinci. And um, the first day I walked on campus, they were doing rocket launching um, in the courtyard, right? And so you have kids who, and I saw this at another charter school in the Valley some years ago, um, a, a child who didn't care about math, except all of a sudden he wanted to raise a robot's arm. They were making robots. Well, to be able to raise a robot's arm, you have to know math. You have to do equations and figure out exactly what it takes to raise that robot's arm. Um, we, I recently had an a aerospace hearing, and uh, there were three 9- and 10-year-olds there who did real, real small robots, and they were... Um, very, very, very excited about it. I, I'm not going to be able to explain it very well because until you see it, it's hard to explain. But they're made out of Legos, and they um, have six weeks to put together a tremendous um, way of operating these different different Lego robots to, to get to whatever that function is. Every year there's a new game, and um, then there's one for, for high school kids, too, that I went to recently that I'll tell you about in a second. But um, So this 9-year-old boy who actually presented to 100 people at Northrop Grumman um, his, te his the parent garden who was with him said he didn't speak before he got into robots. He didn't speak to anybody. Now he's nine years old. He's telling a hundred people how it is the robots work, what they're going to do, how they're going to function. I can guarantee you he's going to stay in this field, right? And but for this avenue that he um, found himself on, I don't think he would have found otherwise. So we have to be creative as a community. It does indeed take a village. I really do believe that. Um, to make our, our whole community much stronger. So um, accolades to uh, Dr. Brand there for, um, for his hard work. And um, it's been a pleasure to know you and work with you, and I know I will for a very long time. But um, that's the kind of thinking we need to do, and I'm all about it. Uh, have loved it. I've, I've had the good fortune of working for very progressive people. I started with Lieutenant Governor Leo McCarthy way back when. I served um, in, the, in the Clinton administration. I worked for Bill Clinton at the Department of Commerce doing international trade work and then came back here to the environmental organization. So um, whatever, you, whatever you got, I'd love to hear it. Um, would love your thoughts about how I can help in any way, shape, or form. Thank you. Yes, Laurel? Thank you. Go ahead, Laurel. I really like your priorities. I mean, education, the environment, elder care, all these things are, uh -huh. I mean, it seems right on target. But how do we reconcile it with the fact that we live in a state with absolutely no money and mm -hmm. huge debt? And do you think Californians are going to be willing to pay more in sales tax and other taxes when we already pay among the highest in the country? So where do we go? Right. How do we get there? I can tell you, it has been a, a horrible last four or five years, and I've only been in the assembly for a year, and the year four years prior to that, they were in continuous budget negotiations. They never got out because they were cutting and cutting and cutting. They've cut fifty-six billion dollars from the from the budget over the last five or six years. Right? Well, you have to remember, <clears throat> the budget at the at its greatest point about five years ago was one hundred eighteen billion dollars. Last couple of years, it's been bouncing between like 79 and up to the high 80s, okay? If 82% of our budget is already spoken for through education, remember, we don't, we don't fund that many things in California, right? We fund education, we fund public safety, and we, and we fund our social programs, which are CalWORKs and other um, programs that I think are a necessity for a sa safe, healthy, um, progressive 
competitive community. Um, so we don't fund a lot. It's not like there's a lot of options. So you either cut schools or you cut CalWORKs or you cut in-home support services, which is 450,000 people who stay at home every day and are able to do so because someone comes in and does their laundry, gets their groceries, makes their meals, right? So Governor Schwarzenegger just wanted to get rid of that program. He said, let's just get rid of that. We don't need it. First of all, almost two-thirds of it's paid for by the federal government. So it's matching dollars, right, county? too. So you would never get rid of that program. Um, at any rate, there are cuts, but the, the program is going to be getting some cuts because everything is getting some cuts, right? So I'm a huge supporter of the governor's initiative, uh, which is coming on. Um, it, the, you know there's been two initiatives, right? So the first initiative that he had was polling at 68%. So yes, I do believe people are ready to have temporary taxes, tax increases. So the first one had a, um, a half cent sales tax increase for five years, right? He's dropped that ballot um, initiative now. Now we're going to the one that was married between CFT. So that one says it's a quarter percent for four years, right? And, and those who make a million or more will, make, will have to pay 3% more for seven years. So I believe that that is a, a good route, and I do believe that it will probably pass. Of course, there is a competing initiative, which might muddy the waters a bit. It does um, make it a little bit more difficult for the first one to pass, but um, I think that's the right path. I think it's where we need to go. And well, and just in case anyone wants to sign um, and and uh, support that initiative, I have uh, petitions here. but. Um, we are in a very tight timeline for this. We have to get the, the ballot signatures. I think we're down to four weeks now. But because it's moving so quickly, that's why the governor dropped his other initiative. They were doing both at the same time just to ensure that one would make it. But now we've, we, he's dropped the other one. So um, it's very exciting. But, but the priorities of the state of California, okay, if you're a taxpayer, I believe you deserve a good education and you, you deserve to be safe, right? If you're not educated and you don't feel safe, then we are not taking care of you. So those will always be the priorities. We just have to be able to fund them. And we've taken so many cuts in those areas that it's not right. And it's our future. If we're not educating our kids, we don't have a future. Yes, sir? Yeah, my, my question was the same that, uh, you know, and of course I, I agree that I support the initiative uh, because my son went to Venice High. Um, Oh gosh, it was you know over eight years ago now he right. graduated, and it was such an outstanding school. We were stunned at how right. much it had to offer. Right. And 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 so it's broken my heart to see education con continuously cut. Um, so yeah, I hope the governors. Well, we have to we have to remember. We, we, the, the reason our educational system is the way it is right now is because of Prop 13. You know, yeah. those revenues were never replaced, never replaced. And so the onus came back to the state because the cities and the counties couldn't pay for stuff, so the, the, the state was paying for it. But so everything is just kind of out of balance. Yeah. We'll have to think about how to pay for things uh, more fairly. Uh, I think this governor will take a, a real good look at that. That's what he's doing with this initiative. I think he was wise to take on pensions first. If you remember last, I don't know, fall or October, November, um, he came up with a pension idea um, of changing pensions for um, for California. And I think that's the right way to go because that's – that's all the other side of the aisle really has, in my point of view. You, yeah, we, you can complain about pensions, but, um, and we'll, so we'll work on them, but don't let that stop all this other progress we need to be making. And, and also, every 30, 40 years, I believe you probably need to look at regulations or initiatives or laws that were passed because we're nothing like we were 30 years ago, right? We're not an agrarian manufacturing society anymore, and I doubt we ever will be again. We are service-oriented, um, very high-functioning group of people, and um, things are different. Things have changed. So we need to look at, you know, what is fairness? Uh, I talk about the fact that we probably should look at a carbon market tax. A carbon market tax means that everyone would pay for what they use, right? And if, and if we can do that, we can bring down property taxes and sales taxes and other taxes based on what you use. People will also use less, right? If you're cognizant of what you're paying, because what you pay for your water and your, and your energy right now is so greatly subsidized. If you actually paid for what it cost you wouldn't be very happy, right? So so we also have to invest in infrastructure, right? I'm all about electric vehicles. I had a bill signed last year by the governor that really makes it easier for electric vehicles and charging stations. But we've got to move to that. Um, 
I was in Israel two years ago, and they have decided to go um, absolutely electric vehicle. They're putting in the infrastructure. Okay, it's a it's a country the size of New Jersey. It's easier to do than in a state like California. We have so many people that would have to get on the bandwagon at the same time, and it's it's a lot of money. But there are people who are investing. There are companies, nonprofits, and and um, for profit companies who are investing in this kind of thinking, and um, and that's the way. California needs to get, we need to be the leader on these things. You know, Chicago has more solar energy than we do, okay? It's not right. So um, we got to make it as easy as possible for our, for our California companies to do well here. We also need to bring back a lot of companies that are, that are um, manufacturing in China, bring them back here as soon as we can, because we have lots of room for them. Any, 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 yes? It's like a sacrosanct sort of rule. Right. I, it doesn't ever look at this point as though it's going to be revoked. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it'll be interesting because this governor is the same governor um, who had to, you know, enact it and whatnot. So. He has told us that he will look at it. That was a year ago, January. I don't know if he still feels that way um, or not. Uh, I personally don't believe we should be touching uh, personal property tax situations, but I do believe there should be fairness. And so if corporations aren't paying their fair share, we need, really need to look at that and make sure that they are. But again, it comes back to everyone paying what they should be paying. Um, and it, just a more equitable system. So that's why I like a carbon market tax, because it's across the board. You either used it or you didn't. And, you know, really, truly, here's what it cost um, to get it to you. So here's what um, you should be paying um, for that. So all those items are in the mix. We're also looking at oil extraction fees, um, all those things that other states are doing that we're not. I mean, there are a lot of us who've wanted that to pass. It just hasn't gone anywhere because we do need two-thirds in the state legislature to get any tax passed, right? So um, that that's what we've been stymied by. But we'll see if we're able to move some stuff, particularly after this next election. Yes. You saying that reminded me that, uh, that part of the struggle, it seems like, in California uh, governance always is that we have so many things that make it very hard to govern. We yes. Initiative process seems quite flawed to me in a lot of ways, and then this two thirds. Uh, is, are there any thoughts about addressing those governance issues? Well, it's a big place, and um, what works in San Diego definitively doesn't work in Oakland, right? Um, we did have an initiative last year, as you probably recall, Prop 26, which would have allowed um, a, a majority to be able to pass okay. tax taxes that that failed, but not by a, a huge margin. Um, so we're looking, you know, yeah, it, the, those are those are the rules we're dealing with. So those are the rules we're playing by. Um, but yeah, we can, you know, we can look at those things anew any time. I have to say, the initiative system, I believe and concur with you, is completely broken. It was established such that the grassroots would have a way to to um, challenge corporations in the state of California. Right, the exact opposite is now taking place. If you have a million dollars, you can put an initiative on the ballot, and if you don't. You can't. Um, so, so here we go. I think there's like I literally there was 117 initiatives circulating um, earlier this year. I don't know what it's down to now, but um, you know it's 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 not the way it was intended. It's not it's not working. So how we get at that um, will will be interesting.